Good morning, friends. Good morning, friends. It is the beginning of a new month, and it is good to gather with you together today as we get started on that new month. I know in my household it's a time of back to school and different routines, and even if you are not in a household where anyone is going back to school, we feel the difference in the air, the Weather these past couple days has been a little cooler, and even though we'll have some hot weather ahead, it's that reminder that the seasons are changing. Our calendars may be filling up with the different fall activities that are ahead here in Kirksville, or if you're joining us from somewhere else and wherever it is that you live, fall brings different rhythms. And one way that some of us sometimes try to approach that is by planning. I was thinking about that. I've got a new planner that's arriving in the mail later today. And planners have been a way that I have often tried to wrap my head around the changing of the seasons. Um, I brought just a smattering of my planners. There have been days that I have, years, that I've gone all out. You know, big giant planner. There have been days that it's, I want something that I like to look at the cover. There's days, seasons, I go utilitarian. There are times that I even get really, really enthusiastic and I color code things. Well, planning is great, right? But I often discover, like I'm sure some of you do, it's not always as simple as making a plan. Now, sometimes a verse from Proverbs 16 comes to mind. And commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. That's Proverbs 16.3. And sometimes we think that if only we can make the perfect plan and just pray about it and turn it over to God, it will unfold exactly the way we want it to. But I was challenged by, I know from experience, that it seldom goes exactly that way. And I was challenged this week um, as I was reading in this book, Peace is a Practice by Morgan Harper Nichols, about the fact that all our plans are wonderful. Our plans are good. Our plans are what allow us to take that step of leaving and moving into something new, whatever that is, whether it's travel, whether it's a new season of life, whether it's dealing with um, an unexpected wrinkle in our health or our circumstances, our jobs or our relationships. That planning is good, but that sometimes we can fall into thinking that if only we could get the perfect plan, that is the way that life would somehow fall into peace. And I want to share a few things from this chapter of hers on planning. She talks about looking back at some of her planners and journals, essentially picking up that stack of what has happened in the past. And she writes, looking back helps me see what worked and what didn't. Looking back allows me to be at peace with everything I tried and failed. I'm able to see that in the seasons where I was pacing myself and producing results I was satisfied with, there was no secret formula. There was not a perfect plan. She writes that her best work came when she was present. Present to the circumstances, present to the people, not when she was trying to follow the perfect plan, either hers or someone else's. She goes on to say that looking back helps me plan for the future. She says, when I read my most recent journal, I saw that I dedicated about 20 pages again, trying to come up with the perfect workflow. She says, part of me laughed at the sight of this, and the other part realized that even though I never figured out the workflow, I survived. I finished the projects I was working on, she says, and maybe I didn't get to everything on the list. But when I wasn't working, I was resting. I went for walks. I spent time with family. She says, when I reflect on the plans that didn't come together, I look at the other plans that didn't come together in other times, and I realized there was still priceless significance in my days. 
And this makes me think of, if you read a little further down in Proverbs 16, after it talks about committing your plans to the Lord, verse 9 also acknowledges the reality that the human mind plans the way, but the Lord directs the steps. And this is part of what we talked about on Sunday, right? That as we are embarking into something new, God is with us along the way. We don't have to have it all figured out. We need to simply be open to what's ahead. Now, making plans can be really helpful for that. Um, I know some of our folks here in church are having some travels ahead. They're packing suitcases. They're figuring out what do they need to take along, what needs to be left behind. And that can be really helpful because we've probably all went on a trip and discovered we'd left something behind. Now, hopefully it was something that could be easily replaced, but sometimes it was something important that not having it along really impacted the way things unfolded. Morgan goes on to say, making a plan is a bridge to figuring out the pulse of what you want to do. A plan helps you identify motivations and think through ways forward but it doesn't mean you have to attach your identity to it. If you're ever hesitant to make a plan for fear that it might not work out, go ahead and release yourself from that pressure. A plan is just a plan. That's all it is. And that as we make our plans, it can be really helpful <clears throat> to think about the intentions behind the plans right? Because it's seldom just about wanting pretty color-coded pages, even if we have lots of them, even if we've managed to somehow use the same color for the same kinds of things. I mean, yes, that's nice, but that's not at the heart of life. That's not why we plan. It says knowing your intentions, the why behind why we're planning, means that even if the plans fall through, you're still a part of something greater. You're free to come back to it again, to refine, to reshape, and try again. And that's part of where that Proverbs 16, 9 comes in, right? Is that while we plan the way, God is there with us guiding and directing because so often in life, the plan isn't fully enough to handle the circumstances that we run into. Life unfolds differently than what we expected to find. Uh, even sometimes in the most mundane of circumstances, we walk out the door and we discover that the tire is flat or something else happens that just absolutely turns our day topsy-turvy that we didn't expect. Sometimes it only impacts the next hour or two, Sometimes it changes our whole life ahead. And she goes on to say that looking at those intentions, that heart below the plan, that that is all a part of practicing peace. We breathe in all the possibilities of what could be, and then we exhale, releasing the need to control the outcomes and letting go of any shame we might feel when we have to start telling people that the plan has changed, that things didn't work out the way we thought they would. Sometimes the hardest person to admit that to is ourselves. We have, most of us, in one way or another, a pull between wanting to control all the little details that we hope will fall into place, and a life of surrender to this bigger story that we're a part of. Probably most of us have days where we wonder, as we look at those lists of all the ways we spent our days, or we run those through our minds, even if they never were written down. Does it matter? Does what I do with my days make a difference in the world? There's a tension sometimes between wanting to do new things and wanting steady rhythms and stability. And sometimes we're in that place where we're not sure what we're supposed to be doing with our lives from this point forward. 
Maybe we've always been that way, or maybe we always knew where things were headed. But now something has changed, and we're not sure where to go from here. We just don't know what path to take. We might want to make plans, but we don't know if they're the right ones, and maybe we're not even sure what plan to make. And I love how she writes this. She says, for the ones who want to practice peace on this long and winding path called life, but simultaneously wonder if they're walking toward a dead end, I want to be another traveler on that road that says, yeah, I know that feeling. I get that too. And that maybe rather than focusing in those moments on trying to get every detail right for a future that's unknown, Maybe that's a time to look deeper into the details of the story that's already being written in your life. What are the words that you find yourself using over and over again? Either when you've written about what things are happening, or even when you talk about your life to other people. What memories do you keep coming back to? What are the questions that you keep asking yourself in the middle of the day? What places in the past do you long for? And what does that longing maybe have to say about how the future might unfold? Because there's so much richness in our stories, right? Um, no matter what has or hasn't happened, no matter how much went according to plan, even if we're the kind of folks who every year we get a brand new planner and we only fill in two pages and then it just sits on a shelf. Right? Because life happened in the rest of that time, even if it was never recorded. And there are beautiful, meaningful things that have happened in each of those days, weeks, and years. There's a time to learn from where we've been. We can go in a new direction. We can look back and take a closer look at what did and didn't work. And that looking back can be a form of gratitude. When we look back, we let ourselves see what was good. We see that no matter what our failures, we have plenty to be grateful for. There are times we've traveled the road with grace. Not perfectly, but grace has been unfolding step by step. We can be undone by life and all its unpredictability, and we can still keep going. I'm guessing every one of you could tell times where you thought you knew where life was headed, and then suddenly it took a turn, and you kept going, and you're still here, and you're hearing these words today. All these roads we've traveled, all these mountains we've climbed, they follow us along the way. They've given us wisdom that we bring with us long before we start to make a new list of what's ahead. We've cultivated courage before we dream the new dream. We've got stories of resilience that have unfolded in our lives. We look back at those stories of resilience that we heard from our grandparents and people, parents, people who've gone before. It's all right here. We've learned and we've grown from all of it. All by God's grace. God directing our steps, not in that way that means pointing arrows down from the sky that says, go this way, go this way, or just waiting for us to figure it out in judgment, but walking with us, beside us, maybe sometimes grabbing us by the elbow and pulling us to the left or to the right a little bit or helping us steer around a rock, but most importantly, traveling with us. So as you make plans for this fall, whatever your fall brings, consider what led you here. And as you make those plans, try to include some things that allow you to keep adding to the threads of what's already been woven together in your life. Remember the intentions that are below them, beneath them, woven through them. Make plans knowing that even though you've come a long way, there's still a journey ahead. And it can be a good journey, and we get to travel this journey together. And when you think about those plans, think about the heart and your prayers, your hopes, your dreams. Give yourself permission to feel what's underneath those. And as we do, share those 
Share those with those you love. Share those with yourself. Sometimes it's hard to simply admit our hopes and dreams to ourself. Maybe just name it out loud and speak it, even if the only one who hears you is your cat or your dog. And remember as we go, however this fall unfolds, we are living, breathing human beings who are worthy of love. No matter what our successes, our failures. So take a deep breath. Inhale and exhale. And know that you are worthy of love. Right here. Right now. On the edge of whatever is ahead. So friends, may whatever plans you make help bring peace. Whether those plans go according to plan or not. We'll see you next Friday. Take care. Walk with God, and we'll hope to see you Sunday, too. Have a good Labor Day weekend. Take care, friends.